Imagine what it would be like rebuilding your life after losing your legs in battle and then finding yourself on a white water rafting ride through the Cataract Canyon. One of the Veterans Administration therapists noted that she had nine of her veterans on high-risk suicide watch. And after the raft trip, they were graduated off that list. On these trips, the warriors confided and shared with each other their fears, anxieties, difficulties, challenges, successes, personal tools. The, camarad the camaradeship proved to be very, very healing. Our speakers today are the founder and principal of Warriors on the Contract, Fred Solheim, and the scientific leader of float trips through the Grand Canyon and Cataract Canyon, Louis Kleinhan. Fred, a scientist, has a PhD from the University of Colorado in geophysics and astrophysics. Lewis, an exploration geologist for several oil companies, has a PhD from the Colorado School of Mines. And so Fred and Lou, you're on. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting us to uh, speak to you about Warriors on Cataract. Um, I am, as Chancey said, a geophysicist from Boulder, Colorado. I'm also a defense contractor to the Office of Naval Research. Microphone. It's movable. Move it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Really? I can, I can hear myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, but more pertinent here, I'm a river runner, whitewater river, river runner. <clears throat> I have been for about, excuse me, <clears throat> more than four decades. Uh, and I founded Warriors on Cataract 14 years ago. Um, with me is Dr. Luke Kleinhans. He's part of this triad of people that run this organization. It consists of me and Lou <clears throat> and our lead therapist, uh, Karen House. Karen couldn't be here today. Unfortunately, you'd like to meet her. She's <clears throat> Department of Defense secret clearance embedded in the Air Force, on staff at the Air Force Academy, two degrees in, uh, two master's degrees in counseling. Um, as, a, as a river guide, she does it all. She's a big part of this program. So the three of us run this program. <clears throat> We've run, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. I think uh, over the last 14 years, we've run about 58 trips through Cataract Canyon and some other big rivers in Utah. Um, maybe a thousand veterans. By the way, I'm not a public speaker. I've, I've been in front of a crowd about less than 10 times in my life, so I have my speech notes here. <clears throat> um, so this Wars on Cataract was founded to take our disabled veterans through Cataract Canyon and other rivers <clears throat> to try and heal them and reintegr reintegrate them into society and get past their disabilities. We take wheelchairs, service dogs, amputees, took a blind guy, um, just about anything, PTS, severe PTS, traumatic brain injury. And one important part of our program is the all-female part. Many of our female veterans in their military service have been assaulted. They say one and two and three, and, and are raped in the military. They reportedly one and three. And <clears throat> they don't want to camp with male soldiers. They'd be uneasy. And they're an underserved population. They don't get these opportunities to do things with other veterans. The, um, the big element of this healing that goes on <clears throat> has to do with the rekindling of camaraderie and brotherhood and support that these, they enjoyed in the military. It's a very strong instinct. And they've lost that once they get mustered out. So this rekindles that bonding, and we've seen some great results. Um, some have told us that they've weaned, weaned themselves of substance abuse, which is ubiquitous among disabled veterans that don't have a purpose. Some have told us they're back in their marriage. Um, they're happily employed. 
And one of the VA therapists that goes along with this said she occasionally has veterans on high-risk suicide watch. That's a, that's a veteran's term, capital letters. And after these raft trips, she's been able to graduate every, every one of them off of high-risk suicide watch. Suicide, the problem with disabled veterans. We lose about 8,000 <clears throat> veterans a year uh, to, um, di they're dying by their own hand. 8,000 in a year is more than we've lost in 20 years of combat in the Middle East. So it's a big number, it's a big problem. Um, a VA therapist told me that <clears throat> this week on the river is worth more than a year of therapy in the VA facilities. And another told me that these soldiers among themselves are better healers than what the VA can do with their, their therapy and their pharmaceuticals. And it's often a lot of pharmaceuticals, not just ibuprofen, but powerful SSRIs like Prozac and Depakote, Tramadol, Zoloft, Ambien, opiates. So this has been <coughs> a very effective healer. Um, I gotta look at my notes here. <laughs> Well, I think I've about covered it. At this point, I think I'll turn it over to Luke, Dr. Luke Lyons um, to make his presentation. You all will bear with me a second when I get logged in here. Okay, all right, we're there. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's indeed an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. Uh, thank you for that, and thank you for what you do. <clears throat> well, I'm not advancing for some reason. You might need to click on the window uh, again. You might need to click on the window, like click on the PowerPoint. Uh, oh. And then try it. I need my... His PowerPoint sound advancer. Oh. Okay. Put in. The phrase put in is river jargon for where a river, uh, where a river journey begins. And it's a special place. And I'd like for all of you to remember that word place for reasons that will become evident uh, momentarily. The put-in for the river journey we're about to take you on uh, uh, is obviously right here. And it, again, is a clearly uh, a very special place and why we are sincerely honored to be here. But before putting uh, in, just quickly, those of you who are veterans, would you please raise your hand? and know that we all appreciate the contributions that you have made. <laughs> the title of the river journey we're about to take you on is Rafting in, Cat in Cataract Canyon, the healing power of nature and, and therapy for wounded veterans. Here's where we're going. As you'll see, we'll essentially start and end with a journey. Many journeys begin with an end in mind, and to that end, I'll first share the mission of uh, Warriors on Cataract, followed by some of the important ingredients for its success. We'll then share an approximately 15-minute video, which effectively conveys the essence of the program. Following that, I'll elaborate on the therapeutic power of nature, share a select testimonial, and our currently planned trips, and conclude, if you will, with a final voyage. The mission of Warriors on Cataract is to aid in reintegrating warriors back into civilian life, to show appreciation really for their service to our country, um, to offer a venue where these yeah, veterans so can communicate, share experiences, matter. and support other warriors, to raise public awareness of wounded warriors' I challenges bit, and sacrifices, and to aid military and but civilian volunteers well, in overcoming trauma and injury because of their volunteer work in combat and disaster zones. Our goal is to provide healing opportunities to the warriors through our river therapy, counseling, 
and sharing of traumatic experiences. I'll now share with you some of the key ingredients that make this program a success by examining the nature of the activity itself and as exemplified by the following photo. So what exactly is the nature of the activity shown in this photo? Well, it's clearly an activity that involves adventure. Just look at what is printed on the sign circled in red. Danger, hazardous rapids in two miles, permit required. Notice the life vest and the smiles. As Fred likes to emphasize, veterans are adrenaline junkies. And what gives them their fix? Adventures like whitewater rafting through places like Cataract Canyon, where 65,000 cubic feet per second of melted snow helps moderate the frequently overheated adrenaline-infused blood that runs through their veins. <laughs> That's how I like my coffee in the morning. So. What else does this photo show about the nature of this activity? Well, it's clearly an activity that is nature-centric and outside. In this case, on the Colorado River, in Utah Canyonland National Park, and in Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, including Cataract Canyon. This is where our roles, which are partly as nature interpreters, helps facilitate journeys that bring these veterans out of worlds that haunt them and into a better place with a promising future. But there's yet another very important and therapeutic ingredient. And that is that this activity clearly involves a group, a veteran group. And more specifically in this case, the 2nd Battalion, 7th Regiment Marines out of Helmand Province, Afghanistan and Iraq, which for those of you who are not aware, sustained many casualties and a very high suicide rate upon returning home. Bringing veterans together as a group again to inter interact with one another again is perhaps one of the most powerful ingredients for success. And that's because healing of soldiers by soldiers is extremely powerful, although it's not a new concept, as pointed out in the following quotation from Lieutenant General Bernard Trainer, who served in Korea and Vietnam. As earlier generations know, Often the best medicine for bruised bodies and psyches is communion among those who have supped from the same bitter cup. From the dawn of civilization, hunters and warriors shared danger in packs. Through the ages, comrades have sustained each other through the heat of battle. Comrades play the same role when the war is done. So once again, important contributions to the success of this program are that it involves adventure, nature-centric, it's nature-centric and outside, and it's a veteran group activity. And none of these ingredients of this recipe for success would have been brought together if it was, were not for the efforts of the man circled in red, Fred Solheim, fellow geoscientist and founder of Warriors on Cataract. This being said, Warriors on Cataract would not be what it is today if it were not for a village of support, including multiple highly trained therapists, a SAG or support and gear team, outfitters that supply boats, crews, food, camping gear, etc., sponsors, a photo album editor, and numerous other con con contributors in kind, many of whom are acknowledged on the following slide, which is a photo of the back cover of the impressive photo album on your tables. In the case of our mission, it does indeed take a village, and now you are part of that village. Please take some time to look at these books. They're given to each participant to remind them of the healing power of the experience after they return home. And they're given to the sponsors to remind them of the value of their contributions. And be sure to read the testimonials and you'll better understand the power and effectiveness of the activity from the veterans' viewpoints. So as part of the village now, we humbly ask that you please keep your ears and eyes open and help us both find and convince those most at risk to come on board. At this point, we'd like to share with you a very moving video comprising imagery and interviews with some of Warrior on Cataract's most important players, as well as some special participants. 
Those interviewed in the video in the order of their appearance include Fred Solheim, geophysicist and founder, Karen House, lead therapist and currently on staff at the U.S. Air Force Academy, Jacqueline Heffington, mother of fallen Marine David Doc Gwynn, Keith Branch, a member of Marine Corps 7th Battalion, 2nd Regiment, and Dr. Dan Dustin from the University of Utah and forefront researcher on the therapeutic benefits of nature on disabled veterans. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge Kelly Bricker, its producer, and Professor Carl Mueller, who filmed the video. So here we go. My name is Fred Solheim. I'm a geophysicist from Boulder, Colorado. I'm also a river runner. I've run the Colorado Cataract Canyon from Moab to Lake Powell probably over 90 times. And uh, one thing I noticed by taking people down the river is a lot of them make changes going down the river. They come out the bottom of the river with some positive changes, maybe some more self-confidence, self-esteem. They've left some baggage in the river. So eight years ago, I started a nonprofit to bring our disabled veterans down the river, thinking it'd be a treat for them, and maybe they'd get something out of it. I knew also that as inspiring as these guys are, as beat up as they are, they're upbeat and not feeling sorry for themselves. So I thought I would get quite a lot out of it too. But it turns out that the river was a very healing mechanism for these soldiers. It's a venue where they spontaneously form up a, a strong support network. I'll be laying on my sleeping bag at midnight and hearing these guys around the campfire still talking their stuff. So um, it's resulted in quite a few of them being taken off higher suicide watch with, by the VA. Some have told me that <clears throat> have thanked me for saving their life. Others have told me they've weaned themselves of substance abuse. And it's all because they got hooked up with their buddies uh, on these river trips. It's been a very powerful tool, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to do it. It's just uh, People ask me why I do it. I say, well, how can I not do it? It's because it's a river trip, it's a lot of fun, and it's very effective. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karen House. I'm a licensed professional counselor, a whitewater river guide, and um, a special forces widow. And um, I'm the trip therapist for Warriors on Cataract Canyon trips. Um, I sort of stumbled into the opportunity a number of years ago, and uh, I'm being a river guide, I know the power of what the river, what a river trip can do for somebody, and um, I've also worked with the military for, active duty military for 10 plus years. Uh -huh. um, and Warriors, to me, was the perfect combination of a golden opportunity to really help some people. Um, this river trip in particular, this uh, we just came off, was uh, a memorial trip on Memorial Day weekend uh, for uh, a Marine that was uh, from the 2nd Battal Battalion, 7th Regiment, uh, Marine Corps Regiment, and uh, we lost one of the members um, last year. He had been on a number of river trips. and. He came on the first one and found it to be so powerful for him, really a place of, of deep healing that um, in the next couple of years, he brought more and more Marines um, out onto the river um, so that they could find the same kind of healing that he found. This river trip was particularly poignant, I think, for everybody because it was a memorial trip. Doc was killed in a, in a motorcycle wreck last summer and um, so everybody came together to grieve and mourn and to um, recognize our loss. Um, and I see this a lot on these river trips, the, the value of what happens out there absolutely cannot be replicated in any clinical office uh, by any traditional means. Um, there is something truly magical about stepping out of your comfort zone and into a place that is so powerful, so majestic, and so healing that you can't help but be fully engaged in a totally different process 
um, as as you move down the river. People step out of their comfort zones drastically. We have Vietnam veterans that will share that have shared stories with me that they have never spoken of ever. One of our very special trips is our, our women's trip with the majority of our women are victims of military sexual trauma. And we've had some really broken broken soldiers on these trips. One of whom um, had a absolutely life altering experience on the river. She had fallen out of the boat between two of the very biggest rapids and in the moment when she could have gone one way and quite possibly have drowned, she chose to swim the other way and she chose to live. And you don't have those moments when you're sitting in a clinical office. And that's one of the real values of, of these river trips and the power, just the sheer power that, that come in this environment. You cannot replicate it. We've had veterans say that our, in the four, they've healed more in the four days on the river trip than they have in an entire year of therapy. That's pretty, pretty powerful medicine. For me personally, um, this trip was a special opportunity because it, um, it allowed me to connect with other, another widow um, who has joined this sad sisterhood of having lost a military service member that's their partner and their lover. And also to feel some, um, like I can support and connect them with resources, which is also what I do with the veterans as well, in addition to being uh, the therapist on call while we're out there on the river. Yes, I don't know if anything would help deal with the loss of a child, but it helped me to understand how this program helped him and how much he enjoyed coming and doing this trip and just the bond that you feel with um, everybody there. It, it was amazing. I noticed when he came back from the trips, he was much more relaxed, um, easier, just even more easygoing before he would be, he was always tense, um, was a very open kind of, it's very um, remo removed from situations. So I think it helped him to just open up again, to enjoy life. He encouraged his um, brothers, as they were called from his unit, to um, join him. And um, I knew a number of his friends from the unit and went on different occasions. Not Some of them couldn't go continually, but um, yeah, and he said, it was very rewarding for him. It was very just getting back in touch and having the camaraderie that he had when he was in the service. Having that again, the bonding. Hi, uh, my name is Keith Branch. I uh, served in the U.S. Marines from 2005 to 2009. Um, I was uh, served with two, a second battalion, seventh Marines. Uh, if you know the Marine Corps, you definitely know two seven uh, for the post 9/11 uh, wars. Um, I was deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, Fallujah, Iraq, uh, and uh, now Zad, Helmand Province, Afghanistan. Uh, both countries uh, saw a lot of combat, and um, it was uh, it was uh, very tough coming home um, for myself and uh, the other Marines and uh, Navy corpsmen and uh, everyone who supported us. Um, in Iraq, we lost uh, eight Marines. In Afghanistan, we lost uh, 20, 20 Marines. And since then, we're, we're approaching, uh, I believe, 30 suicides since 2008 from just uh, my unit alone. Um, when I got out, uh, I struggled. Uh, I did not uh, have the support system that I, that I had in the military. Uh, nor the lifestyle or the, the brotherhood or everything that makes uh, you know Marines Marines and, and service people service people um, I felt like a lost dog when I got out of the service I struggled with alcoholism uh, purpose sense of purpose and uh, really
really just missing uh, missing my brothers. Uh, to be honest, uh, uh, I miss my brothers every day. And trips like this, uh, it's, it's it's natural medicine for for me and my brothers. Uh, I believe in the uh, healing powers of of the river in in the canyons, and the short time that we have together. Um, bring it back to bonds and it's it's a recharge for for the year to come and I believe that uh, service people uh, marines sailors army I, I believe we should get together every year on trips like this uh, because it is saving lives and I am I am certain I am uh, very involved in my veteran community uh, I know what's going on with with most of my guys and I can say for certain that every single trip saves lives. I'm gonna speak for um, myself and other veterans. I believe we, we hold a lot of the same mentalities. Uh, for me, I believe there's a big disconnect between uh, civilian society and veterans coming back from the war. Um, uh, you know, I believe only 1% of, of American society serves in the military, and that, that creates a, a huge disconnect. For me, it's it's for me it's helped me build trust back into society. I think a lot of veterans struggle with civilian the, the, trusting civilians and um, trusting that they'll have their back. And a trip like this shows me not only that I'm able to reconnect with my brothers, but that. There are civilian supporters who want us to, to do this. And that means so much to me. Um, I, I couldn't do, I try, I have try, I've set up reunions by myself, uh, but I, I realize that to get the full effect, we need support. We need financial support to get back together. Um, and we need civilian support to, to maintain the bond that we have, have created in the service. It's, it's a long-lasting bond that will last till the end of my life. Um, thank you for your support, and yeah, I hope that you continue to support us Marines. Okay, go okay. ahead. My name is Dan Dustin, I'm a... So, so for the sake of time here, I'm gonna uh, cut this off shortly. That was Dan Dustin, and he's forefront researcher in the area of uh, uh, the utilization of nature uh, in terms of the healing of, of veterans and much of some of the material that I'm about to share with you right now covers this base so um, forgive me uh, for cutting that off uh, short so powerful stuff there but if you google warriors on cataract you can find that video on YouTube and we encourage you to do so and, and to share it um, so what what is it about nature on these journeys that is so powerful to begin with, it obviously has to do with the place of this activity. And there's that word I ask you to remember. One simply needs to acknowledge the nature of the place. Vivid skies and variegated rock sequences, archeological sites, bighorn sheep, rattlesnakes, blossoming flowers, and again, rivers of melted snow to quench the sometimes boiling veteran blood. I could go on and on. For geoscientists like Fred and myself, we could also go on and on about the geocentric nature of the place. Because many of these veterans are intimately familiar with terrain, physiography, and the ground underneath. Every day on these trips, the rocks just scream at you for their attention, yearning to share their stories about ancient sand dunes, rivers and beaches, about marine fossils and petrified wood, about salt and molten rock intrusions, about oil and gas, potash, uranium, and vanadium deposits. And listening to nature is much more enjoyable than listening to demons. The final reason I'll offer regarding the effectiveness of nature brings us back again to that word place. And it has to do with a teaching approach or pedagogy referred to as place-based teaching and interpretation. Interpretation in this sense has to do with the interpreting that, for example, a park ranger does in a national park. Place-based teaching and interpretation comprises five design elements, the details of which I won't get into, with the exception of one that is circled, which is particularly applicable to our at-risk veterans. 
has shown this particular design element encourages and guides learners, veterans in this case, to form their own intellectual and emotional connections to place. That is, it enriches their senses of place. As many of you know, veterans are keenly aware of places, and especially those places and the finite moments that are associated with their traumas. The goal, of course, is to attract them to better places and to extract them from the bad. In a nutshell, place-based instruction is done experientially in and by means of places. Its goal is to expand veterans' knowledge of and personal connection to places. By emphasizing the nature of these places, that is the landscape, geology, and other natural phenomena, and by reinforcing the distinction between observation and interpretation, suddenly these veterans begin to hear what, for example, the rocks are saying in one place versus another, and they thirst for more. And supping something sweet and healthy is an opportunity to reject something bitter and unhealthy. Included at your table are a bunch of testimonials, and I, I was going to share uh, one in particular, uh, but since you've got those on the table, I'm going to uh, advance forward for the sake of time and um, share briefly our 2024 schedule, which is largely in place and comprises four trips, two spring and two summer trips. More specifically, one spring trip, which is open manifest, in other words, it's open to all service branches, it's co-ed and it's on cataract. One, special, one spring special forces, special operations trip, that is SEALs, pararescue, Green Beret, et cetera. It's also co-ed and on cataract. One summer open manifest trip, that's co-ed and in Desolation Canyon. And one late summer all female trip, open manifest and in Lador Canyon. So as promised, I'd like to conclude with a voyage, if you will, and do so by sharing a quotation from the 1994 PBS documentary entitled Sailing the World Alone. And I share this with you, or as I share this with you, please remember that we are all sailors on the voyage of life. Every voyage is a voyage of discovery, and taking to the sea is always a passage into the unknown. The important voyages in a sailor's life have not been recorded in the history books. The discoveries of these solitary sailors, the triumphs and defeats, the fears and exaltations, the joys and despairs are ultimately private. They are the journeys into the unknown, marked on the charts of the spirit only as here there be dragons. The true unknown continents are those terra incognito of the soul and they are discovered alone. Indeed, it can get pretty lonely out there, especially for at-risk veterans, but they don't have to do it entirely alone. That's why it takes a village. That's why community is so important. That's why it's important to bring veterans together with other veterans. That's why sharing with you is so important. And that's why we'll be here tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and on and on, because every day is Veterans Day. So please consider taking home some of the testimonials, a business card or a brochure, but at a minimum, please keep your eyes open for those who most need what we offer. And with that, I thank you, and at this point, we'll be glad to uh, take any questions that you might have. Thank you so much for that amazing presentation. Um, it's really interesting to me talking about the aloneness that you just mentioned. Uh, as a club, we're now reading a book called Together, which is about the epidemic of loneliness in our whole society. So it's, it's not just veterans who are experiencing this too, but um, I'm just interested, how do you, um, how, uh, how, yeah. How do you select the, the, the participants in the program? I mean, are there waiting lists on it? I mean, what is the process for getting somebody to be able to participate in one of these ama uh, amazing adventures? Uh, how, how, do you, how do you choose the people that we allow to come on board? What's the criteria? Oh, well, how do you prioritize um, We try and take first timers most of the time because they get so much out of it. But some people are so traumatized that they need a second trip or a third trip. We had one woman who was so traumatized with MST 
<clears throat> we brought her over from the UK, I think four times. So the overarching criteria, the criterion is what's the need and how much benefit will be uh, realized by the veteran. So it's kind of a judgment call. When we get over overbooked, it's a, kind of an unpleasant task to have to go through and figure out who you have to leave behind and who you can take along. Does that answer your question? And I'd simply, I'd simply add to that that once selected, there's no guarantee they'll show up. And that for that reason, we compel, we're compelled to ask you to help us not only find, but help convince those who most need it to come on board. Before I forget, um, please uh, uh, feel free to take those uh, books, those uh, picture books home. So. Yeah, and we have some extras up here too, if, if you need some more. Thank you. Photo we have albums. Oh. And the testimonials. These are revealing. Hi, <clears throat> thank you for your presentation. I, uh, I live in Minnesota. I have a colleague whose husband is still in the military and he's really hesitated um, drawing upon such resources to deal with some of his post-traumatic stress because <clears throat> if the military knew that he was struggling, it might impact his ability to continue to fly. So with the military. So I'm curious, is there, uh, is this an anonymous thing? To, if they are still active military, is there a way that they are then, you know, that this is kept private so that their status isn't impacted? Because apparently there's still a bias in the military when service uh, members get this kind of support. Thank you. He's asking if uh, we take active members. That's part of it, I think, yes. Uh, we haven't had any active members that I can recall, but they're certainly welcome. It's the, uh, mostly the veterans are in the care of the VA hospital and some that aren't. There are a lot of veterans aren't in the care of the VA hospital and they should be. So we, cer we search them out. Sometimes these guys are so PTSD'd, you can't get them out. You can't get your, even the, you, you send their buddies over to pull them out and they fight back and they hide. So it's sort of difficult sometimes to get the ones that are in the, in the in the most need. Both Fred and I are hearing impaired. So did, did that answer your question? Okay, thank okay. you. So I think we have time for one more question. Uh, thank you. Um, many years ago, uh, I attended in, in Boulder a, a presentation in which they talked about the use of dogs for uh, PTSD veterans. Do they still do that? That's the first part. The second part is, I, I was on the board of the Boulder College of Massage Therapy that closed in 2013. It was the only school that was a nonprofit, and they used to do uh, massage at, um, uh, for uh, veterans w just with PTSD. And they used to describe that at the beginning, in, uh, uh, they couldn't do five minutes worth of massage. Every time they heard something outside, they wanted to, to jump up and, and uh, you know, in fear. And then ultimately they were able to have a, 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 a real massage. And the, the, the third thing is you might want to add for your presentation, the first hospital, or first place to bring soldiers together to heal was in the 17th century France the Invalides, uh, uh, well, it's now a museum. Anyway, um, I was curious whether the, bur whether the dogs and, and massage are still being used for uh, PTSD victims. No, they're very helpful. They're helpful in a lot of areas, uh, not just people with PTSD. You see them in hospitals. So we do take service dogs. We have um, doggy life preservers. The brand name is Outward Hound, Outward Hound. That's kind of cute. Um, and then we have some that go underneath the dog to keep, you know, you get them a little higher in the water. They're called the uh, underdog. But uh, these guys are, you know, closer to their dog than they are to people. It's understandable. Brad and Lou, uh, as you may be aware, Rotary reserves the last word, and I've been asked to uh, give the last word today. And uh, I must admit, when I first saw the program uh, announcement for your program, I immediately ran out and started going through all my raft gear and 
uh, rafts looking for my Hey Duke Lives t-shirt, uh, which I, I couldn't find, and then my wife pointed out it probably wouldn't fit me anymore anyway. Um, I was particularly taken by two parts of your presentation. One was the commentary on place. Uh, I think most of the people, well, many of the people in this room have rafted rivers. We all know the importance of place, and Cataract Canyon in particular is a remarkable place. Uh, Barry Goldwater once said the uh, only vote he ever regretted in the U.S. Senate was voting for the Glen Canyon Dam because what we raft today is only one-third of the white water that used to be in Cataract Canyon. And Cataract Canyon is, as is Lodore and Desolation and all of the others, a remarkable place. The other part that I wanted to share with you is how much I appreciate the support you're giving our veterans. I'm not a, a veteran, but I am the proud uncle of two, th actually three nephews and grandnephews who have served in Afghanistan and Iraq. And I know how important the support of organizations like yours is for those who returned. So thank you so much for what you do. Um, one of the things that we do to uh, honor people who come and speak to us is honor you with a, a project that Rotary has, which is uh, the attempt to eradicate polio in many of the same places the your veterans have fought, Afghanistan in particular. Uh, in your honor, we will be donating uh, 100 doses of polio plus vaccine or polio plant vaccine to the Polio Plus effort. And, and again, we want to thank you so much for your presentation and more importantly for what you do.